Hello everybody, this is Mr. Rob and welcome back to episode number 38 of the Toronto Thunderbirds franchise here on Madden NFL 22 and today Toronto has their very first home game in Toronto here at the Rogers Center as they host the 1-0 Detroit Lions. Now before we jump into this game, we had a couple injuries in practice. There will be no Isaac Yadam or Cole Holcomb in this matchup, but... We come in 1-0, and so do the Detroit Lions, who are coming off of a fourth-quarter comeback victory at Lambeau Field a, seat a week ago as they beat the Packers 28-27. This is after a 9-8 season just a year ago in Dan Campbell's first year. This is a hungry Lions team looking to start off the season 2-0. So if you're excited for this one, make sure you drop a like and subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content, as it'll be the Lions offense starting this one off, the former number one overall pick. Jared Goff takes the field through for 238, one touchdown and one interception in that win a week ago. They'll come out at their own 25-yard line underneath center as it'll be a handoff to DeAndre Swift, who runs left side, gets about three on his first carry. Now they go empty here on second and seven. Goff throwing five-man rush, looks left side and is off the hands of his receiver incomplete. Now you got a third and seven. Goff looks left side. It's a completed pass, but not a first down. And the Lions go three and out to start their day. Here comes the Thunderbird offense led by Ryan Fitzpatrick as he takes the field. He was pretty solid last week. 242 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions in that win in Cincinnati. Hoping he can carry that momentum into week two here in front of the hometown fans. First and ten to hand off to Antonio Gibson, who falls forward. That's a gain of four. Last week he had 23 carries, 114 yards, and a touchdown in that win. Now second and six. They're going right back to Gibson. Not much space at the middle. Good fill that time by Okuda. And Thunderbirds face a third and five. Two tight ends. Fitzpatrick back to throw. Looks left side, and it's off the hands of McLaurin. And both teams start off with three and outs as Tressway punts it deep. They're going to let this one bounce inside the 10, and it's down at the five-yard line. Tressway pins the Detroit Lions back. They're going to come out in a heavy set, try to get some space, and here's Swift met in the hole. That's the fourth-round rookie, Devarion Overshone, with the stop. Now second and 10, Goff in his own goal line is looking to pass. Fires across the middle and he has a wide open man. It's the newest Detroit Lion, Will Fuller, who gets them out to the 24-yard line. He was traded for in the preseason to be the number one target here in Detroit. New set of downs is a handoff to Swift. This is not going to count, however, as there is a flag down. And it's going to be an illegal block in the back against the Lions, specifically against Will Fuller. Now you got first and 17 from your own 17, bunched to the right of the formation. Goff in the pocket, has some time, is starting to run out, and he just airs one towards the Toronto bench. Now third and 17, everybody's in tight. Goff drop back, looks off his back foot, throws it deep into double coverage, and that one he's lucky wasn't intercepted. Almost could have been offensive pass interference. But ball goes back to Toronto, and here's a second and eight. That's handoff to Gibson. However, Toronto has an illegal block in the back downfield, and it's against Terry McLaurin, the culprit on nine out of our ten flags for that penalty. Now second and 14, Fitzpatrick underneath center. It's a delayed give to Gibson, looking to get him involved early in the game plan this week. That's his fourth carry of the day. Now your own 44-yard line on third and seven. Fitzpatrick to throw. He gets hit, but he finds Curtis Samuel across the middle. Nice poise in the pocket. And now they're in plus territory. Gibson on the first and ten. Here's a handoff. Runs through a tackle before being tackled down at the 38-yard line. That's a gain of five. Now they go and fake the reverse, and they hand it off to Gibson. Gets about four, making it third and one. And they go back to the Gibson well, and he's got big space up the middle. Trying to establish that run game. You got Gibson, you got Scherf, and now you got Mitchell Schwartz on that right side. Why not pound the rock? They go right to that right side. You can see the hole here. Gibson, easy five yards. Back to Gibson, second and five. They're just going to run him to the ground, it seems like. But it's working. First and goal now. However, center Chase Rullier will have to come out of the game, and he will be out for the rest of it. So that could be a big blow to the run game. As Toronto is going to try it again, this time stuffed in the backfield. That is Trey Flowers. Makes it now second and goal from the 11. 
They fake the reverse again, give it to Gibson. He cuts right side inside the five. He's tackled down at the two. Now you got third and goal from the two. They do come out in the eye. Showing run, they do, and it's not going to work. Jordan Hicks with the fill, and the former Arizona Cardinal forces three for Toronto. So the Thunderbirds score first with the field goal. Now it's the Lions' turn to try to answer. Here is Swift getting a carry, but overshown again with great pursuit. Chase him down after two. Now you got third and eight. Golf empty in the pocket, almost picked off across the middle, not on the same page as his receiver. Campbell not happy with that one, but they give the ball back to Toronto. And we join in here as Gibson gets tackled by Hicks, and I guess you could say quote-unquote tackled as Hicks was on the ground. But now it's a third and eight. Trying to spread out the Detroit defense. Fitzpatrick tries to get outside the pocket, but he's brought down by Romeo Okora for a sack. Toronto will punt, and that's how the first quarter will end. The Thunderbirds currently hold a 3 to nothing lead over the Detroit Lions. They'll start their very first possession of the second quarter at their own 35-yard line here, second and nine. Golf crossed the middle, almost intercepted by William Jackson. He had one last week, got his hands on a lot of footballs. Almost had another one there, and then on the next play, they connect downfield to Will Fuller. 101 against Collins, that's a mismatch. Now they're at the 30 of Toronto. Another first and 10 pass here for the Detroit Lions. Golf's got time. He's going to let the play develop and find Traylon Burks inside the 15-yard line. The number 18 overall pick out of Arkansas gets them inside the red zone. Coming out here in the eye, handoff to Swift on first and 10. He's going to follow his blockers. That'll get him four. Now they're going to motion him out of the pocket here on second and six. That leaves Goff to stand alone for a pass play as he looks. He's got time. He's going to check it down left side. Jackson almost gets a hand on it, but instead TJ Hawkinson finds the end zone. Touchdown Lions. And the Detroit Lions take a 7-3 lead in the second quarter. Fitzpatrick and the Thunderbirds looking to answer, but they got to convert here on third and four. Fitzpatrick in the pocket, checks it down. Nice route by Deami Brown. Gets him away from Aurorie, and that's a first down for the Thunderbirds out to the 41-yard line on Dami Brown's first catch of the day. Go back to the ground here on first and 10. There's a hole for Gibson to find, as that's a gain of nine. Second and short, Gibson stays in the backfield. It's going to go right back to him on that right side. Thunderbirds trying to exploit that and follow their two best linemen. Man in motion across the formation. It's going to be a two tight end set. Handoff Gibson up the middle. There's a big hole again. Gibson inside the 10. Already out past 100 yards. Already at 20 carries as well. And now it's goal to go for Toronto. Fake the end around again. Play hasn't really worked out for him as Gibson's met in the backfield by Hicks again. Now second and goal. Handoff to Gibson again. He's going to run right side. Breaks a tackle. But now it's third and goal from the six. And you think you have to throw for it. McKissick checks in. They do throw. Fitzpatrick, quick drop, rolls to his left. And he's got no one open. He checks it down to Bates. That's a three-yard connection. But it'll force the Thunderbirds to kick a field goal or not. They're going to go for it here on fourth and goal from the three. Clock is running down. Fitzpatrick with the hard count. They will snap it. They are going to give it to Gibson, and he'll find the end zone. Touchdown for the Thunderbirds. However, Logan Thomas comes out for the rest of this game. The Thunderbirds take a 10-7 lead going into the two-minute warning. Goff's got the Lions out to the 40 of Toronto. He's on the logo, and he's going to be sacked. There is Montez Sweat off the edge. He brings down Goff, and there's a timeout from the Thunderbirds. They get the football back. One minute, 48 seconds to go. It's Patrick looking to put more points on the board. Checks it down for Samuel. He's going to run forward a little bit. And the Thunderbirds will go a little no huddle. Second and two. It's Patrick. Across the middle. Has Brown. Makes the catch. Ab absorbs the contact. And now you're out to the 44. Less than a minute to go. Fitzpatrick in the pocket. Checks it down again. Gibson can't hold on. And that'll stop the clock. 50 seconds left to go. Fitzpatrick's going to take a deep shot to the end zone. It's for McLaurin. And it's going to be broken up through the hands of Amani Aurorie. Now you got third and 10. Fitzpatrick throws left side. That one is incomplete. And the Thunderbirds will punt. There's still 40 seconds left on the clock. But Tressway... Trying to pin them deep does do just that. And Tressway with one kick of the leg erases any chance the Lions have of putting points on the board. So we'll go into the half with the Thunderbirds up 10-7. to 7. 
Well, to find out who takes the second win in the season when we return. As the NFL season starts to kick into gear, we're going to take a look around the league here in week two at some action. We're going to start off in the state of, drum roll please, well technically New Jersey as the Jets host the Green Bay Packers and they're getting destroyed. Packers got upset last week in the fourth quarter. They are not happy blowing out the Jets 27-0 at the Meadowlands currently. In Kansas City, the Chiefs facing the Denver Broncos. They're up 30-7 at the half. Rattler, three first-half interceptions. Chiefs looking dominant again. The early favorites to repeat as Super Bowl champions. And then finally, in Chicago, the Bears hosting the Minnesota Vikings. This one is closer as it's 14-7. Justin Fields and the Bears looking for the first one of the season. So is Minnesota Kirk Cousins with a touchdown pass to Adam Thielen. But we're going to jump back into this ball game as Toronto will take the field first on offense to be in the second half. At their own 16-yard line, handoff to Gibson, still trying to pound the rock it looks like, but Detroit more than ready for this one. Only a gain of one. Now they're going to go back to the shotgun. It's going to be another give to Gibson right side, and there is the crease. Gibson powers through a defender and gets close to the sticks. Third and one. Handoff Gibson again. He's going to find it going right where the right tackle Schwartz would be. He is creating lanes for Gibson to find. Now their own 30-yard line. New set of downs. It's a first down pass, and there's a quick hitter to McLaurin. That's going to get you nine. Second and one going back to the air here. Fitzpatrick pumps fakes, but does check it down to Samuel, who's going to have the first down and maybe some extra yardage. Flag down on the play. And they're going to get roughing the passer against the Lions. Attack on an extra 15 thanks to Isaiah Oliver. So now they're out to the 42 of the Lions. Fitzpatrick's going to go underneath center. Hand off Gibson up the middle, and that's going to be a first down, but there is a flag down on the play. I think it's holding. No, it's going to be illegal block in the back. It looked like the backup center also held. They're going to get McLaurin instead. But we're going to redo the play, it looks like. First and 10 from the 42. Fitzpatrick with a play fake. Trying to find somebody downfield. Nobody's open. And Fitzpatrick just wisely throws it out of bounds. Now second and 10. It's a pitch outside to Gibson. He's going to not get that much space. Nice run defense by Detroit on the outside. Makes it 39. Toronto having to throw for it. Finds Samuel who holds on through contact. Curtis Samuel moves the chains. And we're out to the 27-yard line. First and 10, Fitzpatrick, deep shot to the end zone, looking for Samuel, but he can't get both feet in bounds. That was close, no challenge. Instead, it's second and 10. They're going to go back to the toss. This time it's McKissick, who shows a little bit of burst of speed and gets out to the 19-yard line, a gain of eight on his first of the day. Now third and two, they go back to McKissick, and he is stuffed. Tim Settle breaks through the line, puts McKissick down short, and Toronto on fourth and two will go for it. Hard count from Fitzpatrick. Hard count again. It looks like somebody moved, and it's going to be on the offense. So that'll force a field goal. Toronto didn't really have any desire to throw a snap there, but they come away with three and make it a six-point lead, and Detroit back with the football. Second and eight from the 46 of the Thunderbirds. They motion out the running back, and Goff checks it down. There's Will Fuller again, and he's going to move the sticks out to the 38. About five minutes left to go in the third quarter. There's a handoff to Gibbs, or Swift, excuse me, on first and ten. He hasn't had that much running lanes today. Now second and eight, back to Swift. A little bit of space, but good fill by Cameron Curl. Stops Swift, and now it's third and six. Goff, going to drop back from the shotgun. Looks right side, has a man, but he's short of the sticks as TJ Hawkinson couldn't get a first. And that'll force a Detroit field goal. And it is up and good, so they chip it back down to a three-point game with 3.13 to go in the third. Here's a second and ten for the Thunderbirds. Gibson gets the toss, and this time the toss does work. Gets deep inside into Detroit territory at the 48-yard line. Gibson having himself a heck of a day. They give him a break here on first and ten. It's a deep ball left side. McLaurin is wide open, and that's a touchdown. McLaurin burns Aurorier off of the press. Gets behind him, and that's a 48-yard connection. De or the Toronto Thunderbirds extend their lead. The hometown fans happy as we head to the fourth quarter. Toronto is currently up 20-10 of the Detroit Lions. 
Start the quarter, though. The Lions are in Toronto th territory at the 30-yard line. It's a third and three, though. they got to convert. Goff with a nice pass out to the right side. That's Traylon Burks again. Nice grab through the contact to Fuller. That'll put them at the 15. Two tight ends here on first and 10. It's a handoff to Swift, trying to keep the run game a threat. He's got 17 today for 57. On second and eight, there's a flag down immediately. As this one's going to be short, but it looks like it's not going to count. A free five yards for Detroit as Fort came down into the neutral zone. Just a fraction too much. And that'll make it now second and three instead of third and long. Golf quick drop. And he is going to be pressured. Matthew Ioannidis says, I'm just going to make it third and long myself. That's his first sack of the day. Now third and 15 for the Detroit Lions. And it's a check down right side. They're going to say feet in bounds. I don't really think so, but it's not really worth the challenge. Detroit gets three. Second and two for Toronto. This time they actually give the end around to McLaurin. I haven't really ever seen them do that. It does give them the first down, so maybe that's what they were planning for the whole time. Now another toss to Gibson, still trying to commit to that outside, and it's not really working here in the second half. Lions, other than that one play, have done a good job against the toss. Third and two, McKissick checks in again, and this time he doesn't get it as well. McKissick has not been a good third and short running back. Don't know why they don't give it to Gibson. I know he's got to be tired, but he is the go-to man in those scenarios. Toronto does walk away with three, but it could have been more. Now 23 to 13, seven and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Lions down by 10. They did have a fourth quarter comeback last week. I'll we'll have to see if they have it more in the tank. Here's a second and 10 throw off of his back foot, and it's a connection to Burks. Traylon Burks beats Fuller deep, and the rookie has a touchdown. That'll get you right back into it. Seven quick ones for the Lions. And we're now only up 23 to 20. See if Toronto has any sort of answers. This is a quick pass to Diami Brown on first down. That gets about five. Now second and five from the 48. Trying to set up a screen for Gibson. It does not really work. Tackle down to the 50. Hicks read that one to perfection. And now it's third and three. Fitzpatrick to throw. Looks left side. Wide open. Diami Brown gets away from the defender. And he's to the 21 of Detroit. And the Thunderbirds looking to add on to their lead. First and 10. Back to that end around. This time doesn't work. Nice run commitment by Jeff Okuda to not get fooled on that play. Second and nine. Toss play to Gibson. This time it works. He has the first down. Gets tripped up. Nice hit by Whitehead. But Gibson does have the first down. And his goal to go for the Thunderbirds. From the 8-yard line, McKissick checks back in in the eye. They're going to hand it off to him. He finds a small crease before being tripped up. Makes it to the 6-yard line. Gibson checks back in. It's a pass play. Second and goal. Fitzpatrick in the pocket. Rolls to his right. Doesn't see anything open. And actually takes the sack. Jordan Hicks, who's been all over the field for the Lions today, brings him down. And that takes us to the 2-minute warning on a crucial 3rd and goal from the 9. Fitzpatrick stands alone in the pocket. Five receivers in the pattern. He looks to throw. Steps up. Has a man coming from behind. Actually loses the football. That was Trey Flowers who hit it out. Thankfully recovered by Toronto. But now they're up by six. And the Lions have a chance to go down and take the lead. Five receptions for 144 and a score for the rookie out of Arkansas today. He will be needed on this drive. First and ten. There's a connection. There's to the aforementioned Burks. Now, going to huddle. A minute and a half to go. Check down. This is not going to get you anything. It's actually just going to burn clock. And now there's 110 to go. Second and 11. Goff in the pocket. Looks left side. Actually just throws it out of bounds. And now you have a very crucial third and 11. Minute to go. Goff looks left side. Nice route out there to get open. Will Fuller gets wide open on Jackson. Gets him to the 43 and gets out of bounds. Exactly one minute to go. Goff, looking right side, has time, throws it deep, and this one is incomplete. Almost found his receiver. Nice defensive deflection. Now you go second and ten. Throw right side at the marker. That's Traylon Burks, but he did get tackled in bounds. Lions don't use timeouts. There's 30 seconds to go, and Goff left side, finds a man, gets out of bounds, but maybe he was already out of bounds. It's illegal touching on Will Fuller, the fifth. And that'll bring it back to the 27-yard line. Second and 10, 29 seconds to go. Goff 
Drops back, has a man in his face, but he finds a man across the middle. It's Fuller, making up for his mistake, gets it to the 12, and now you got 23 seconds. First and 10, go off on the play fake. He's looking, fires right side, and it's through the hands of Jackson. That would have ended the game. Instead, you give the Lions another chance. 17 now left to go. They still have a timeout. Goff drops back. He's looking left side. Fires that way. And it's a touchdown for the Lions. The rookie Trey Burke comes in clutch with his second TD of the game. And now they're just an extra point away from taking the lead. Kick is up. And it is good. The Lions have the lead with 11 seconds to go. Toronto, can we see some Fitz magic? Gibson will field it at the five. He's been a good returner last year. He took three to the house, but he will not this time. And they're at their own 31 with seven seconds to go. You need a prayer. Fitzpatrick throws it deep right side. This one is incomplete, and now you only got one second. It's a Hail Mary attempt. It's not going to get close to the end zone. This one's going to hit the turf, and the Lions stun the Thunderbirds. 27 to 26 back to back weeks the Lions with fourth quarter comebacks they were down 14 last week against the Green Bay Packers they came back and won in Lambeau they were down 10 points this week against the Toronto Thunderbirds in the Rogers Center they came back and won what a game what a shocker and in their very first game in Toronto they will not send the fans home happy. The Thunderbirds drop to 1-1. One one. The Lions improve to 2-0. What a game. And if there's one play you got to go think back on, it's that dropped interception from William Jackson. The play before the touchdown, it went right through his hands. Jackson, I thought, has done a pretty good job early on the season in getting his hands on some footballs. But you got to come away with the interception there. And in the very next play, the connection at Goff to Burks. That connection was on fire today. And the Lions, a sneaky good team, might I add you, is now 2-0 in the NFC North. We fall to 1-1. That is a heartbreaker to say the least. I thought the team played pretty well. I thought the offense got kind of stagnant in the second half. And then the defense, the pass defense was just atrocious in the second half. They did a good job against the run, but still struggle with giving up a lot of passing yards. And we're now 1-1. To start our season as we travel back on the road in week three some upgrades for a lot of players as they continue their development and we did have an injury it was against Logan Thomas he will miss the next three weeks with a torn labrum so it's gonna be up to the second year man of Boise State tight end John Bates to step up he will be the starting tight end for those games that Thomas is missing we also do get Yamin Davis back though so maybe we'll finally get to see him Again, after missing the first two games with a broken finger. Here's your week two scores around the league. Green Bay actually did slaughter the Jets. The Chiefs slaughter the Broncos. But we'll take a look at the televised game, starting off with the 1 o'clock game in CBS. The Chiefs 54-19. Spencer Rattler, five interceptions. The number one pick showing those rookie struggles. The Chiefs are a very, very good team. They are my favorite to win the Super Bowl this year again, but... Five interceptions, that's just, that doesn't look good. We were the one o'clock game on Fox, so here's your four o'clock game on CBS. The Patriots and the Steelers. Mac Jones, the reigning offensive rookie of the year, outduels Jameis Winston. So the Steelers start their tenure one and one, and the Patriots pick up a nice win against a old AFC rival. The later game on Fox, the Cardinals go into Seattle and win 44 to 10. Another beatdown here, week 12 against or week two, excuse me, against the team that represented the NFC in the Super Bowl. Two interceptions for Russell Wilson. Kyler Murray looked really good for the Cardinals, and they pick up a much needed win over division rival. Sunday night football, the Cowboys go to the Buccaneers and win 31 to 13. Buccaneers are my favorites in the NFC, but the Cowboys, they're going to be a force this year. I know it came down to us and the Giants last year, but I do think the Cowboys are going to be our biggest threat this year in the NFC East. Big win for them against the Bucks, And then on Monday night, the Saints beat the Falcons 28-14 in Atlanta. Malik Willis, two touchdown passes. Watch out for the Saints this year. They got a new quarterback. They got a new offensive coordinator in Eric Bieniemy. let me mind you. They're going to be a sleeper team for me. 
Here are your players of the week. We saw Murray's game. Zadari Smith had three sacks in that game against the Jets. The Von Miller was AFC defensive despite their loss. And then for the second straight week, Baker Mayfield gets AFC Offensive Player of the Week. Three touchdowns this week, five last week. Baker Mayfield showing that he deserves to be the long-term future in Cleveland. Next week, we travel to Chicago to face the Chicago Bears. Both teams 1-1, one one, both not wanting to drop to a losing record. And this is a very good Bears squad. I do think they are one of the top teams in the NFC. Justin Fields has shown that he is a superstar early. And they have one of the best linebacker cores in the league as they drafted well. They have a couple superstars there. This is going to be a hard team to beat on defense. Led by Justin Fields, though, on offense, second-year man out of Ohio State. He is would have won Offensive Rookie of the Year last week, last year if it wasn't for Mac Jones' record year. He does have Allen Robinson. That is his top target, still a dominant receiver. And then on defense, you got Khalil Mack, one of the best pass rushers off the edge. In the middle, you got Roquan Smith, a dominant middle linebacker. And then on the other side, your first-round pick, Drake Jackson, another good pass rusher. So... It's going to be tough to go against that front line. I do think we can exploit the secondary, but we just got to give Fitzpatrick some time. We also have a breakout challenge next week. We'll have to see who that is. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Sorry we got stunned late. It was a doozy. I hope you enjoyed the game, however. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content. This is Mr. Rob, and I'll see you in the next one.